In this video, I want to show you the text tool in Adobe Photoshop and uh, how to work with text layers in conjunction with your Photoshop uh, files, uh, images, and um, solid areas. We're going to start just by working on this color fill layer, just so you can see what the text tool does. But we'll get into a couple of uh, pixel layers at the end of this video, um, just to give you a full idea what the text tool can do and how cool it is to be able to incorporate it with your images. So very sophisticated tool. Over the years, uh, Photoshop or Adobe has really, really improved this tool so that it almost matches the sophistication of some of the graphic design programs uh, like Illustrator or InDesign. Um, so uh, there's lots of options here, a lot more than I can cover in a single video. Uh, but we will uh, give, uh, you'll get a basic overview, um, some of the basic tools that you can work with for paragraphs or phrases or words, and uh, some of the more fun things you can do with text. Okay, uh, so to get started, we're going to just uh, go ahead and show you how to create a text layer. I'm going to go ahead and uh, reset this really quick so that we can start from scratch. This is our character panel. Um, and so we can just go right to our text tool and get going. Okay, so to get to your text tool, it's on the toolbar. Of course, it's the big T. We can either click on that or we can use the shortcut text. And of course, as soon as you do that, you see that you have all of these options across the toolbar. Now, I've also pulled up, as you can see over here, I've pulled up these panels. These um, you actually can find up here from the type panels area. And uh, the reason I have those up, you don't actually have to have them up in order to work with your text tools, uh, but they give you a lot more options and uh, in a lot better explanation. Uh, these are your very basic tools. And uh, all of these are over here, but there's more, of course. So we'll go to both of those. But let's start with the basic panel. So, um, and, uh, when we're making text, um, we can choose the horizontal text tool. There's certain times when we can choose the vertical, but we're not going to do that tonight. Um, this is the font. This is the style. This is the size. This has to do with the edges of the font, and this has to do with paragraphing. We're going to get to all of these in a minute. And this, of course, is the uh, color of the font. We're going to start off with black. Now before I actually click in and make some uh, text and make a text layer, I want to actually change the size of this. I'm going to go ahead and go to a 60 point font uh, because it was de it defaults down to 12, which isn't going to be very big on this page. So we're going to go up to 60 points so we can see what we're doing. A couple ways you can start text. The easiest is just click anywhere. Um, and I'll just click right here. And you notice that it immediately puts in what they call this placeholder text. This is something that Adobe um, uh, does automatically. You can set your preferences so this doesn't show up, but honestly, I don't mind. I just delete it before I get started. And as soon as we've hit that, I don't know if you noticed it, uh, but this layer comes up. Um, so this is a separate layer in Photoshop. It's a text layer um, that we can move around and do almost anything that we do with other layers um, uh, we can do in Photoshop. So it's already there and we can just start typing. So I'm just going to type a couple of words, sample text. And uh, so this is following all of the rules of here. Um, we can do lots with this. We can, while we're in here, we can um, just highlight it. We can change the font size style. I'm going to show you that in a little bit more detail. We can change the size again and we can change the color. All of those things can happen. Now let's just, um, um, as we go on, now notice as soon as I clicked into here it named it, but let's just keep adding some text so you can see what will happen. Um, you might imagine, because you might be used to working in a Word program and it looks an awful lot like a word program. I'm just leaving the capitals on right now. If I just keep writing as if I'm writing a paragraph, oops, 
notice what happens. It just goes right off the edge of the page. You would sort of expect it to wrap around and stay contained, but it doesn't. If we wanted that to stay in, we would have to do a return. But of course, if we do a return, that creates a new paragraph and our formatting gets kind of confusing. Uh, so it's much more this uh, particular way of starting a text uh, layer or a type layer is uh, much more uh, suitable uh, for the point text is much more suitable for a short phrase or single words. Let's take this out and show you a different way to start. And honestly, um, the paragraph way of starting is the way I start almost all my text, even if it's just going to be a couple of words. It just uh, is more flexible in case I change my mind or I want to do something different. Okay, so in this case, we click and we drag and we make a box. And you notice now this sample uh, text comes in and uh, all, of it is, uh, all of it is there. Before it wouldn't show all of it, but now the box is big enough that we can see the whole text. We can move it around and change it and it contains the text wherever we want to put it, making it bigger, wider, etc. It also is going to allow us to format this like a regular paragraph. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and click on that so that it is saved. Uh, we can also, just as we could with the with other text, other layers, we can grab it, we can move it around. Um, but I want to do a little bit more with this. I want to do some paragraph formatting. And in order to do that, I'm going to go back to the text layer. Whenever you want to actually uh, do anything with the text again, you want to make sure that you're not only on the layer, but that you are in the text tool. So I click back on this. And I'm actually going to uh, paste in some other text with some other characteristics, uh, just so we have something a little bit more dramatic and a little bit more related to our topic. So there we go. So this already had some properties plugged in, and you'll see how both here and when we get over to the character, the color, the uh, font, all of these things actually changed. I'm going to go ahead and click again so it changes this to another one and I'm going to move it up. So now that we have this in this uh, paragraph box, this allows me to use the paragraph panel and to make some changes to it, some formatting changes to it, just as we would when we're doing um, a paragraph in a Word document. So back into text, make sure we're there. And uh, notice that we have some of these options we have up here. This has to do with our alignment. Uh, we can align to the left, to the center, and to the right. Let's go back to the left. But if we go to the paragraph panel, which you see right here, you notice that we have those three options, plus we have the justified options. Now, justification means that it's actually going to squeeze it into this box and line it up on both sides. Uh, kind of a mixed, um, kind of a mixed benefit. Notice that if this is too small, if your text box is too small, you might not get everything in there. Oops, I had an extra V on there. Um, so this one is going to justify everything to the side and put that final line over to the left. This one will put it in the center. This one will put it in the right, and this one will spread it out over the whole thing. Now, that can get a little bit goofy because of the way that things are spaced. So normally I don't really uh, recommend, unless you're a graphic designer, that you do justification. I will, however, show you one little feature that can help this to look a little better. You can hit the hyphenation, and in this case, it did not help because it broke up that last one. Um, you can hyphenate your words. And I like this feature where you can take your hyphenation on and off because for me, and I'm going to go back to the left justification, I really prefer not to have my words split up visually uh, for anything that I'm using with an image file. So I usually leave this off, but again, it's up to you. You don't get quite as even the, the page spreads. Now, a couple other things I'm going to show you here, and then I want to go on to some of the more entertaining aspects of text. Um, so let's talk a little bit about actual paragraphing. Um, so just as in the um, 
uh, the regular world. I'm going to go ahead and make this just a little bit bigger, just as in the word processing world. I'm going to move this over. Um, a paragraph is made when you hit return. So I'm going to just turn each of these sentences into a paragraph. But you notice that it didn't do any of the normal things that we usually get for paragraphs. That is, it didn't make spaces or indent. Um, that we can do down here. We have a lot of control. So I'm just going to click into this first paragraph. And on this one, we can just indent that by 50 points. Um, we could also do a very traditional indent the first line. And that gives us a paragraph. And we can also either put a spacing, and I'll just do it by 50, under the paragraph, or I can do it, or sorry, above the paragraph, or I can do it, if I go to this one, I can do it underneath. Okay, and you notice that now I am definitely losing um, room on this page. It's going out of there. I can just do a command all though, make this a little bit smaller and fit it in. So those are some options for paragraph, but I want to move over to character and show you uh, some other interesting features. And to do this, I'm actually going to take this text out change the shape of my box a little bit. We'll go ahead and work on the same layer. I'm going to make the font about 200. Very, very large, because I want a nice big word for us to play with. And uh, we'll leave it on this orange. I'll play with those colors in a little bit. Um, and I'm just gonna do sample text. And why isn't text on there? Well, that's kind of frustrating. Uh, I see, because my text is so big now that we don't have room for it unless we pull this down. So this is a very crucial thing, this text box. Um, it does keep it contained, but it also means you need to make sure it's large enough. Okay, so I've gone over to character here. Now notice everything here is over here, but we have a lot more going on here. And I'm going to walk through these pretty quickly, not necessarily in a way that you can make um, use of them right away, uh, but it'll give you a little heads up for exploration. Okay, so the first one, and we want to go ahead and click this in. So this way I have this, um, this selected, not the text tool selected. The first thing that we can do is we can actually play with the font. And this is a wonderful feature in uh, this part of Photoshop is that it actually allows you to make this choice, um, to see what your choices are as you go. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick Baskerville. I want you to notice as we go from here to here, first of all, I need to get my spacing a little different, but we'll, we'll work on that. Um, uh, what I want you to notice is that this is what we call a sans serif font, it has no little bells and whistles, very plain. This is a serif font. It has those little doohickeys on the end. We're gonna go ahead and pick a serif font just because it's sort of fun and it'll give us some other options. Okay, so I've got that serif font. It's Baskerville. I'm also gonna come over here and just change that to bold so we have a little bit more to play with. And we're going to work down both of these columns. Um, I'm not going to do any of this for tonight. Um, just uh, give you a couple of heads up over here. So this is our font size. We're at 200 points. These are very interesting things to play with. So this is the kerning, and it sets the kerning between two characters. It also sets the kerning, that's the, the relationship between um, the different um, the different characters. We can set this by metrics, which means that they're spaced exactly the same, or we can set it optically, which means that it spaces it according to the look of the Im of the different words. Now we can also go in between any given two letters, and you notice now we have all these choices. We could actually 
bring those super close together, which could be kind of cool. Notice it's just operating on that, those two letters, or we could push them very far apart. Kerning is incredibly useful when you're doing more sophisticated and advanced graphic design because the normal spacing of text is not always ideal. But for now, we're going to leave that be. Okay, we'll go back into our layer. Um, the next layer that we're going to look at, this is our the height of the vertical scale. And I'm going to click into this and we'll do 50%. And you see that this leaves the font size the same, but it just changes the height of it. This, I always want to make sure I'm in the right window. I want to show it to you. There we go. This is the uh, baseline shift. Uh, the baseline just has to do with where it sits. It's just going to shift where it sits on the baseline. Not as exciting and fun as some of the others. Okay, let's go over here. This is the letting. This is the space between the two lines. And it's on auto right now. I'm going to go ahead and show you what would happen. And I won't even go down to these because it's so dramatic. Uh, this is going to lessen the letting. That is the space between it. And you can see that it, they literally overlap. Well, let's go ahead and bring it back to auto. Um, okay, the next one has to do with the, uh, this is not the kerning, but it seems very similar. And I always have to remind myself what this is called. This is the, um, oh, that's the horizontal scale, sorry. This is the tracking. And with tracking, this has to do with how close or how far all of the letters are to each other. So if we went minus 10, it's going to bring them closer together. Minus 100 brings them very close together. Plus 100 pushes them much farther apart. Okay, we'll go ahead and go back to zero. Okay, cool. This has to do with the um, horizontal scale. So let's go ahead and do it 150. Makes it wider. And then we can also do 50, which makes it much narrower definitely looks like I need to have a space in there. Okay. Um, then we, of course, have color, and we have various things that we can play with here. I'm going to go ahead and leave that right here and uh, go on to the next video. I'm going to show you some layer styles, some fun ways you can play with that panel with text, as well as how you can incorporate text into your images in a number of different ways.